video view. Video View Prince's latest feature film, Graffiti Bridge, is up for grabs. There's the kickboxing star everyone's talking about. On, man. And a Thunderbird special, including a chat with the real Lady Penelope. Lady Penelope speaking. Hello, Penny. Jeff here. Hello there. We'll also be taking in Bette Midler's new video, Stella, a true story all about Al Capone's little-known brother and the latest video from Robert De Niro. But first, the exciting news if you're a Prince fan. His fourth film, Graffiti Bridge, is a real sign of the times in that it's bypassing cinema release and video rental and being released straight onto sell-through for 9 dollars Released on April the 2nd, it's a fantasy along the same lines as Purple Rain, with Prince playing nightclub owner Kid, who's trying to find true love and keep his rivals at bay. I'm sure all you Prince fans will rush out regardless of anything I say, but Purple Rain and Sign of the Times were far better, in my opinion. If you want to be the first on the block to have a copy, then wait until the end of the show when we've got five of these special graffiti bridge packs to give away, which includes a Prince medallion and T-shirt. Now, it's not just music vids which are coming out straight onto the collector's market these days. Last year, you may remember we highlighted Cinema Paradiso and the Connoisseur video label, which included many art house pictures hitting video for the first time. The new label's been selling very well, and this week sees another seven titles being released, including works by Pasolini, Parajanov and Jean-Luc Godard. Of particular interest is the National Film Archive's impressive restoration of Michael Powell's The Edge of the World, which is tailed on video by the 1978 short, Return to the Edge of the World, in which Powell and team return to the location of the original feature. There's also Noi Tre, which is Avati's touching study of the last moments of Mozart's childhood, and George Sluzer's superior psychological thriller, The Vanishing. Many critics hailed this film as one of the thrillers of last year, paying particular attention to the film's final five minutes, which are shocking, to say the least. It's all about a young Dutch couple who are heading to France for a cycling holiday. While Rex is filling up at the gas station, Saskia goes off to get some cold drinks and never returns. Rex then spends the next three years trying to find out what happened to his wife, putting up posters and then following leads from the abductor who fails to show up. Eventually, a Frenchman turns up on his door, claiming to know what happened to Saskia, and from there on in, Rex is hooked by an overbearing desire to uncover the truth. Monsieur Hoffman. Je suis l'homme que vous cherchez. Qui fait des beaux-arts à Nîmes. Je vous ai vu, mais vous n'étiez pas seul, j'ai pas osé vous déranger. Elle est mort, morte. Venez avec moi en France et vous saurez tout. Jusqu'à sa mort. Je vous offre cette chance. Unique. Mon frère Vanishing is a superior thriller, which is both simple and cunningly constructed. It makes you wonder why Hollywood bothers spending so much money trying to get the same effect in films like the thematically similar Frantic, for example, and not getting anywhere near the tension nor creepiness of this film. Now, it's been a while since there was a new Thunderbirds video out, but the 15th edition puts that to rights straight away. Back in the 60s, when you didn't mind seeing the strings, this was regarded as expert animation. Now, apart from a competition later in which you can win a collector's edition t-shirt, tonight is a special for Thunderbirds fans, because I'm joined by Sylvia Anderson, who not many know is the real Lady Penelope. Sylvia, could you tell me how Thunderbirds was originally conceived? Well, I, it really was a result of all the previous series that we'd done before, including Supercar, Fireball XL5, uh, Stingray. 
they were all half hour. So when we had a chance to do an hour program, I think we had a chance then to elaborate on our characters. And Thunderbirds was really a result of all those shows. It was all those things rolled into one. The programmes achieved a real sort of cult status. Are you surprised by that? Well, um, I suppose I am surprised in one sense, but looking at it and analysing it, I'm not, because we were rather ahead of our time when we actually made the shows. So we would take um, a, a craft, if you like, uh, or a rocket, and we'd say, now, I wonder what they'll be doing with that, say, 10, 15 years from now. So we were ahead of our time. So that part of it doesn't surprise me. International Rescue, Lady Penelope speaking. She was a terribly flamboyant sort of character. Are you like that? I suppose I am, really. I, I don't know. I don't know, you know how other people perceive me. I did actually model the voice on Fenella Fielding mm. and Joan Greenwood because they've got that rather sort of twee voice that comes back, you know, it's all rather like that, rather little girlish. Very well, Jeff. I'll get Parker to arrange a flight at once. Sylvia Anderson, the real-life Lady Penelope. Now another beauty rears her head again in the adventures of Sadie. Better known as Our Girl Friday, this is just one of a number of classic 60s comedies coming out on the Legend label. during this time that Joan Collins was already making heads turn in a string of comedies in which she played the romantic lead. The other releases in the package are All in a Night's Work, starring Dean Martin and Shirley MacLaine, Carry On Admiral and Dentist in the Chair, starring Bob Munkass, Kenneth Connor and Peggy Cummins. A real must. A couple of other new releases which are worthy of mention are the huge surprise hit Warlock, in which Highlander-style antics take place across the centuries, and In Excess's anthology of hits, all two hours of it, which takes in all their singles, including some rarely seen early videos, like their first ever Keep On Walking. So, this little band of ours started in, uh, well, we, we set the date actually on Tim's birthday, uh, which is August the 16th in 1977. But we'd actually, I guess, <clears throat> been together for about six months before that, but that was our first kind of I guess, gig in front of people, and it was actually his, I think it was his 21st birthday party. So 1980 was when we made our first record, uh, being in excess, the album, and of course our first video, which was for Just Keep Walking. Um, and it was actually a sort of a concept of Michael's, if I remember, Michael came up with the idea of putting us in sort of a, a box and we just thought a box with the room and in excess on the floor and put us in it. the new releases, the video industry has been having its usual bout of brainwaves, coming up with a number of new video concepts, like this, which looks like a video, but is in fact the first ever video greetings card. Here's the message while inside there's a tape which matches the front of the card. Prices range from $6.99 to $9.99, although if that's stretching the bank balance, then there's the new sports club label which includes tapes by the likes of Jack Nicklaus and Ian Botham. Stay with us after the break when we've got James Wood's top tips for getting good service in fancy restaurants. Carrying around some Arab's dick. <laughs> Eric Roberts hitting out at a failed career in baseball. And Olivier Gruner, the new French kickboxing superstar, getting a kick out of life as a student. See you then. <laughs> Come on. 
welcome back. Now, after part one, you may well be saying to yourself, that's all well and good having plenty of videos to buy, but what about the new rental releases? Well, as it happens, there's a fair selection this week, but first the rundown of the top ten most rented videos in Britain. Flying in at number ten is the Disney classic The Rescuers. Down and almost out at number nine is Tom Cruise in Days of Thunder. Romance is still in the air at number eight with Pretty Woman. Madonna and Warren Beatty take a plunge to number seven in Dick Tracy. And there's no change at this week's number six for The Exorcist 3. Arnie's looking lost at number five in Total Recall. And chart-topping Die Hard 2 falls to this week's number four. Cop thriller Blue Steel comes straight in at number three. And Eddie Murphy's back with another 48 hours at number two. But this week's brand new number one is Gremlins 2 The New Batch. Now, on to the new releases. First up is Stanley and Iris, which is a gentle romantic drama about a couple who fall in love despite many obstacles. It stars Robert De Niro, who after some years of inactivity seems to be in just about everything these days. The last time we saw him on video was playing an embittered Vietnam veteran in Jackknife, and since then he's made a whole host of films, like Martin Scorsese's Goodfellas and his latest cinema film, Awakenings, in which he stars opposite Robin Williams as a man with a severe medical problem. His role in Stanley and Iris also sees him trying to deal with a handicap. In this one he plays an illiterate trying to face up to not being able to read or write. Here he is in an early scene in which he's trying to hide this fact from Iris, played by Jane Fonda. Well, hey, Crown Rose, got a ticket? You didn't give me a ticket. No, you got a ticket. We don't take shoes without giving tickets. You didn't give me one. No, everybody gets a ticket. I didn't. You lost. No, I didn't get a ticket. Everybody gets a ticket. I didn't get a ticket. You said it cost two dollars. Here's the two dollars. I didn't get a ticket. Everybody gets a ticket. Mister, I'm going to describe the shoes to you, okay? And then you can give them to me. They're brown brogues. They're right over there, right behind you. Well, if you don't got a ticket, you got a sign for it. Just give me the shoes. And put your name down. Just give me the shoes. I'll write your name Don't down. wrap them. Just hand them to me. Put your signature down. I'll give you the... That guy's crazy. He wanted his shoes and he paid for them. <laughs> Quite right, too. It takes a little while for Iris to realise there's something wrong with Stanley. But when she does, she agrees to help him. And what do you know, they fall in love with Stanley filling the shoes and later jackets of her former husband. Uh, that shirt's gonna run. You ought to separate the whites from the colour. I wash everything together. Including my socks. Unload four quarters. Stanley and Iris is a film that's heavy on good intentions and fine playing, but light on real dramatic involvement. It's all pretty moving in a matinee kind of way, especially when Stanley hides his pride and asks Iris to help him out. But it's De Niro's performance which really wins the day. He's always worth watching in my book, and even when the film's script leaves a lot to be desired, there's still plenty to enjoy just in the way that he acts every scene like it was his last. There's more moist tear ducts to be had in our next video called Stella, which stars Bette Midler as a woman who gives up her child so that she can have the opportunities mum missed out on. If the plot sounds familiar, that's because it is, of course, a remake of the 1925 classic Stella Dallas, which was in turn remade in 1937 with Barbara Stanwyck and Anne Shirley as mother and daughter. Here's Bette Midler in the latest version, about to have her daughter adopted so that she can have the break she feels she deserves. Why don't you just say what you mean? Yeah. Well... Jenny's at an age now where she should have things. Not money. I don't mean that. But books. 
museums, art stuff. I know you can take a girl to a museum or, or buy her a book, but then when she gets home, who's she going to talk about it to? And, and she's, she's just not happy. I can see it. All I have to do is look at her face. I know her. Look, I feel like I did a lot for her, you know? I raised her myself. And I think maybe my part's done. And she's crazy about her dad. I mean, she takes after him an awful lot. And so if you and Stephen was to get married, and she was to come and live with you, you could probably adopt her. And the two of you'd have the same last name. And everybody would just, just naturally think she was yours. If I was that actress, I'd sue the makeup artist. Bette Midler in the remake of the remake of Stella Dallas. Now, having not seen the previous two versions, I must say I really enjoyed this movie. Bette Midler is excellent, and the story about a single mum's struggle to bring up her daughter is as relevant today, if not more so. Well, if there's one real-life character whose life story has been remade countless times, then Al Capone is it. The Lost Capone, however, gives the legendary mobster's life story an added twist. Did you know, for example, that he had a brother called Joey, who ran away from Chicago, changed his name, and then tried to crack down on Brother Al's booze trade in the Midwest? Well, now you do. Here's the four Capone brothers after a street fight at the beginning of the picture, with you-know-who carrying the baseball bat. What the hell took you so long, huh? I did what you wanted me to, right? Didn't I? What I wanted you to. You heard it. It's what you should have done on your own. You got a nerve calling yourself a Capone. You're not one of us. You understand that? That's enough, Al. Get out of my sight. Get out of my sight. What's the matter with you? Charming. Come back, Robert De Niro. All is forgiven. As a result of that sibling rivalry, Joey, played by Adrian Pazdar, heads off to a new life as Gary Hart in a frontier town in Nebraska where he gets a variety of odd jobs and ends up as the town marshal, a man much admired by the local school teacher, played here by Ali Sheedy. Don't expect anything along the lines of the untouchables with this video. This is pure made-for-TV drama, redeemed somewhat by the story, but let down by a general mediocrity in the characterization and the playing, particularly by Eric Roberts as Al Capone. He doesn't look like the mobster, he hardly sounds like him, and the final reconciliation between the men before Al's death is frankly embarrassing. A bit like a B-grade ending of Once Upon a Time in America. And now we have more men partaking in that fascinating pastime, kick each other's faces in, or I left my brain in my diaper. Last year we brought you smack up to date with the latest kickboxing star Jean-Claude Van Damme. But no sooner had we declared Jean-Claude the new king of the ring, than along comes two times world kickboxing champion Olivier Gruner to try and dethrone him. The name of Gruner's first movie is Angel Town, and the whisper in the video trade is that it's going to be the action movie of the month with the film's star, the new find in the martial arts ring. It's not hard to argue with action like that, but to be honest, I do like a decent story to get my teeth into, and an actor who just reminds me of a Schwarzenegger understudy is no great shakes as far as I'm concerned. Angel Tan is from the same producers as AWOL, which may give some indication of what to expect. Bruno plays French exchange student Jacques Montaigne, who gets a place through his athletic abilities into the engineering department of UCLA. This is just the beginning of an awkward freshers' year as Jacques moves into a ghetto inhabited by gangs of Latin Americans and ends up defending the homesteaders like some latter-day Alan Ladd in a remake of Shane. Although I have to stress any similarity between that classic and this effort you could fit on a postage stamp. A far better bet is The Boost, a yuppie nightmare movie about a couple who get everything their hearts desire and then squander it through bad luck, mismanagement and an addiction to cocaine. If you haven't already guessed by now, this is the film which stars James Woods and Sean Young and which led to their much publicised romance and offset squabbling. Young's side of the story is that they fell passionately in love while filming The Boost, and then apparently he didn't want to know. She sent him some odd things through the post, which in turn led to Woods trying to sue Young. Just an ordinary day in the life of Hollywood. But does the finished product live up to the production story, I hear you ask? Yes, it does. There's something very creepy about Woods' character, Lenny, who's hell-bent on making it big in L.A. 
he becomes one of the smartest salesmen there, making millions out of a tax loophole in real estate sales. But after a business crash, his best friend tries to help him by giving him a little boost. You need a boost, kid. You need to clear away the cobwebs. Chell, I got enough problems, all right? What, what, do you think it'll be habit forming? <laughs> you think I'll have a monkey in your back? It's a boost, that's all. With friends like that, who needs enemies? Certainly not Lenny, who begins a decline into coke addiction that's just pitiful to watch. Here he is showing how not to pull off the big business deal, which could save his career, his marriage, and his life. Lenny, have you determined whether this is a Section 355 transaction under the new code? Uh, what, they don't have any lawyers left in New York? Oh, yes, indeed. I happen to be one myself. Mr. Zimmer, you're asking Lenny about things that should properly be a part of the fine-tuning. Why? We know you're a smart guy. We're talking about staking a lot of money and our reputations on your husband's plan. Now, everybody knows Lenny's a smart guy, too, but he's had some problems. Mike. I'm sorry, Lenny, Linda. Mike's timing is a little off. You want to blame me for an IRS upheaval that decimated the tax shelter business across the country? Fine. Hey, I can take this plan to Genstar. Lenny, we love the idea in its broad strokes, but naturally we did a quick background check and there were some rumors. Now, when we all get around the big table and somebody waltzes in and starts telling stories about you, we'd like to be able to tell him he's full of shit. Oh, uh, excuse me. Fairly. Let's not go back to your Arab friends and wipe their asses with their bare hands and have them get the wrong idea. You sit there on your fat MBA and try to figure out how to steal my idea because just maybe I won't fit into your club of Arab fucks and this isn't my goddamn table. This is his first night. He'll be fired for this. Lenny, what are you talking about? The table's fine. We're just here to try to do some business. You've been spending half the night creaming over my wife while this schmuck humiliates me. I don't need you assholes. I can get plenty of action on this idea. Check. Hey, let me out of this dump. But he isn't feeling well. You think I'm a junkie? I'll act like a junkie for him. Lenny, we may want to come back here. Why don't you go home? We'll take a cab. No, I'll drive you. I'm your servant. I'm supposed to be nice to people like you. This idea is good. Don't hold this God against damn me. Damn it, Lenny. Ronald! My idea is going to be on the cover of Fortune. You know what these guys are going to be doing? Carrying around some Arab's dick. <laughs> Now, I watched a lot of that film through my fingers. It's often that unbearable. Not bad, but Woods is so convincing as this tragically flawed character that it's a painfully accurate portrayal of a man living on the edge of a precipice and enjoying leaning over. And now to tonight's bumper competition in which we've got two sets of special packs to give away. First up is the five copies of Graffiti Bridge, along with the collector's edition T-shirt and Prince medallion. <laughs> All you have to do is tell me what song closed Prince's second film, Under the Cherry Moon. Was it A, Kiss, B, Purple Rain, or C, Mountains? There's also five copies of the new Thunderbirds video, plus five special T-shirts to whoever can tell me which Thunderbird did Alan Tracy command. Was it A, Thunderbird 3, B, Thunderbird 2, or C, Thunderbird 4? Send your answers to Video View, P.O. Box 1830, London N19UP, or call the competition hotline on 0898 66 4360. The lines are open 24 hours a day. For the latest news and information on all this month's top video releases, call me on the Video View hotline. The number is 0898 Double six four three six zero, and the lines are open 24 hours a day. You just killed yourself. Well, that's all for tonight. Make sure you tune in next week when we've got the young guns riding for a second time and trying to evade Pat Garrett. See you then. Good night. Oh.